right, everybody. So the lab that we did was a lab about precipitation reactions. Um, the idea here is once again to help you connect your chemistry triangle, right, of being able to see it, right? So we'll see the reactions happen, connect to what's going on at the molecular level, and then the symbolic level. So we'll get lots of practice with writing out equations, okay? So a reminder of precipitation reactions. This is the one we did in class last time, right, where I mixed the two aqueous solutions of Ki and lead nitrate, PbNO3, right? So before they're mixed, once again, plus sign between, they're not mixed yet, the ions are just floating around together. But then once they mix together, we saw this yellow precipitant get made. That was our solid down here. Um, and then we talked about how the ions that are still just floating around, those are our spectators. Okay? So, once again, in the lab, the idea is you'll see a total of 21 different chemical reactions, observing which ones form a precipitant and which ones do not. Um, and then from these results, we'll be able to identify what we actually created using those rules of solubility we talked about before. Okay? Um, so the basic procedure, you'll see a video here in a second, um, is they'll just be mixing two different things together and observing what happens, okay? So go ahead and if you'll want to flip to, I'll come back to the video here in a second, um, flip in your uh, lab notebook to a page that looks like this. This is where we record all the data in the lab. It's on the very last page, I think it's... I don't know which number it is. Okay. Um, but what you'll do is in each of these boxes, the first thing you'll do is record your observations. Okay. So you'll see what happens when they drop the two things together and record what happens. Okay. Now, some of the times nothing will happen. And so your observations will be no reaction occurs. Okay. Um, so let me go to the video and watch a little bit and then I'll come kind of show you how we'll fill this in. Okay. So the first box, they actually have already mixed them. I got here a little late in their film. So we'll write our observations there. But if you watch right here, you'll see them start adding the other two. So it's kind of like a grid system, right? Um, and the two things are mixed together in the square. So one, notice once again, there's already one drop down. And so as she's adding the other one, that's showing you the process of them being mixed. Okay, so let's pause here for a second and we'll come back. Okay, so what we're gonna do is go to our data table and record our first box up here, our observation. So in this one, I observed, once again, here's a picture kind of we can see better. Um, is I can see like there's a little dark brown precipitant going on there. Okay, oh, wrong thing. Okay, so I would say dark brown is the color change I kind of see going on there, right? Once again, the key thing here is that precipitant you made. Okay, and the second one, I'm gonna write no reaction, no observations, right? We mix them together, it doesn't appear to change in a different type of color, no solid was formed, okay? So you say no reaction or no precipitant. Okay. For our reactions that did occur, so this is only if, so in this box right here, right, this one, we don't need to do anything else, it's done. But for the ones where a reaction does happen, what we wanna do is this. We want to write the two possible products that could be made from these things mixing um, with the end goal of identifying what is the substance, right? What did we make? What is this dark brown, right? What is that dark brown thing I see in the liquid that was created? Okay, so reminder of what we're going to do here. So the two things that were mixed, okay, is we mixed NaOH and FeCl3. Okay, so keep in mind that before these things are mixed, both of these are existing as ions. So what I'm going to write in the box is those two ions that are present. So NaOH is actually going to be Na plus and OH minus are the two things floating around in there. Okay, um, once again, I know that plus sign for Na, right? I know this because of the periodic table and then OH must be one because it has to be neutral. Okay. All right, coming up to our top one here, so our FeCl3, okay? Um, if I use the periodic table, I can't find the, right? I can't find Fe's charge. It's not there. Um, but I can find chlorines. 
So chlorine always will have a charge of minus one. Okay, so we have a negative one charge, which means the iron must be a plus three charge um, because there's three of them here, right? And so in order for it to be zero, those must be their individual charges, okay? So now, once they were mixed together, they do a swip swap, right? So the positive of one, so this positive can pair up with this negative because positive and negatives attract. And what could be made is Fe, and then balancing out the charges, OH3. Okay, so that got created from those two ions or could have been created. The other possible creation could be this negative pairing up with that positive. And so we get an ACL because it's, since it's a plus one, minus one, we don't need any subscripts because they balance each other out, okay? So our final step is, once again, those are our two possible products. But we know that one of them is the precipitant and the others are just spectators. So using our rules of solubility last time, we talked about how it has Na in it, potassium, nitrate, and ammonium. It cannot be the precipitant. It's always soluble. So knowing that rule, that tells me, okay, it's not this. This is my precipitant. So your final thing is you want to circle um, what is the thing I created, okay? Um, if neither of these or none of these right here are present, then you would go to the more detailed solubility rules in our notes. Um, but just knowing this will actually help you figure out most of that, okay? And then once again, if no reaction occurred, I don't have to do any writing inside the box, okay? All right, I'm gonna go back to the video and we'll finish watching them and you can get your observations. Okay, um, so don't worry about doing the ions right now. Just kind of record your observations as you see them mix the substances together. Watch closely here. She adds in, once again, oh, notice there. Oh, see that precipitant? Now, I'll show you a picture once again after because some of the white ones are a little bit hard to see, but hopefully you can kind of see in that one, um, those top, that right one over there. You can see it's kind of more of like a milky white instead of a clear white, um, which shows us that we have a white precipitant that was created in that one. Watch here as the second one is added in. See that milky white one in the second one? Oh, and then look at that last one there. Look how that one, you can really see that precipitant stand out well. Now keep in mind, it's not just about seeing the color change, right? But it's actually seeing like the cloudiness of that solid being created. Um, obviously color change helps, but You'll see in this last row here, they're mixing a substance that is already tinted yellow. Um, and so obviously that's going to make them all look yellow. We're looking for the one where 
um, you see that precipitant stand out. Watch this next one here. Notice how different it is. Do you see that? How that yellow is a little bit brighter. Um, and then I'll flip over here to a picture so you can see them a little bit better. Okay, um, so we can see our different precipitants, right? So here, 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 um, and then we definitely have that precipitant there. And then the white ones are a little bit hard to see against the white paper, um, but we had precipitant here. Precipitant here and precipitant there. Okay, so take your observations and then continue to fill in your data chart. Um, once again, where you identify the precipitant made and the ones that had a precipitant. Okay, once you complete the chart, um, then you'll want to go back to the beginning to work on there's a beginning calculation question. Um, that says to show the math and explain in words how you would prepare 100 milliliters of a 0.1 molar sample of iron three chloride. So the idea of this question is, is iron three chloride is a solid, okay? But we used it as a solution. So show me the math and explain how I did that, All right? I made the solutions starting with a solid product. Um, so in a sense, how do I turn a solid into a molarity? What's the values I need? What's the measurements I need? And what would I do, okay? Once you do that, then you can go to your analysis questions, which is where you'll just be picking um, uh, just some of the precipitation reactions. So you won't do all of them here, but just some of them for practice of writing the overall and the net ionic reaction. And then finally, just some follow-up questions that focus on kind of the visuals as well as some of the vocabulary um, of what goes on. So that is it. Um, once again, you can go back and pause the video at the part of the pictures if you need to get that data down um, a little bit more. And then let me know if you have any follow-up questions.